So about eight months ago, I made a guide video for the Strongest Battlegrounds, and I'll tell you this, that video is very outdated. So I think it's time to make an updated version. Now, everything I'm about to tell you, you have to practice. You can't just do it once and automatically be great at the game. So who is this video targeted towards? Now, I would say this, is, this video is meant for people who have already been playing for a few days, maybe even a few weeks, and they've hit a point where they see all these other players doing neat little flashy attacks, and then they, they want to do it too. I'm just going to get this part out of the way before we talk about anything else, and that is, what character should you use? What character is the best? Now, look, everyone's opinion is different, but there are characters that are better than others, that is quite obvious, but not everyone's going to agree on what that character is. But if you want my personal opinion, I have a tier list video that I made, and I'll link it in the description so you can go watch it if you want. Now you might be going into this video wondering, is he gonna talk about mobile? Is he gonna talk about Xbox? And I'll say this, I'm going to talk about mainly like PC uh, from my perspective. And the good thing about mobile is that a lot of these things on mobile are repeatable on PC and a lot of these things on PC are repeatable on mobile. So mobile players can follow this guide well, but Xbox players, I really can't do anything for you here. Oh yeah, I guess PlayStation players are also a thing now. Like I'm sure somebody who plays on console will make a guide video at some point. Just watch out for that maybe. So now we need to talk about the terminology players use to describe certain movements and techniques. So first, we have M1 or M1s, and M1s are basically punches. And the reason they're called M1s is because on your mouse, there's mouse button 1, which is the left click, and mouse button 2, which is the right click. And punches are, are done by pressing the mouse button 1. So then, instead of just saying punches every single time you want to talk about punches, you can just say M1, because it's a lot nicer to say. Next is front dash, and this is literally just moving forward and pressing your dash button. Side dashing is moving left or right and pressing your dash button. Back dash is moving backwards and pressing your dash button. And evasive slash ragdoll cancel, or whatever you want to call it, is when you're on the ground, you can press Q in a certain direction and it will make you recover, but it will go on cooldown and you won't be able to do it soon after you get knocked down again. Uppercut is four M1s, but when you reach the third M1, you hold the jump button and then you do the fourth M1. And down slam is the same, but instead of holding space, you stop at the third M1, jump, and then do the fourth M1. Now this is a, a neat one, iframes. So iframes, it's short form for invincibility frames. And invincibility frames are basically, when you use a move, some moves have invincibility frames, and while you're using that move, you can't be hit, and you can't get damaged. And then there's tech. Tech is short form for technique. So you hear people say like, Garo tech, uh, shove tech, stuff like that. All right, now it's time to get into the juicy stuff. The most important thing to focus on to get good in the strongest battlegrounds is movement. Your combos, your move set, that all means absolutely nothing if you can't touch your opponent. They can outmaneuver you all day. Your overpowered combos, those won't work. You need good movement in order to be skilled. The most common mistake I see people do is they don't use their forward dash correctly and they don't side dash at all. So you just see people using a raw forward dash even when the person's obviously blocking. It's like it's like a wake up call is needed. Forward dashing is something that you should use more in combos instead of just using it straight up. The one dash that you need to use is side dashing. Side dashing is the most important dash in the game, in my opinion. Side dashing is the most important part of getting good. It's like the only way you can really get to your opponent without like running at them for five hours or landing a super lucky forward dash. Side dashing is the only way. Side dashing is pretty easy once you get the hang of it. So you, you just need to basically turn your camera, do a little half circle with your camera, and press the dash button sideways, and, and dash sideways. And it works on both the left and right side, and this is one of those things that gets so much better with practice. I was trash at these. I was absolutely horrible at side dashes for the longest time, and I just kept playing the game I kept playing, and now I think I'm pretty good with side dashes. I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but I think I'm pretty good with side dashes. Sometimes people are so good, 
It's like they're teleporting. It's like their side dashes are so good, they're basically teleporting behind you and hitting you. And the next thing is, don't be afraid to block more. You might be like, oh, but whenever I block, people call me block spammer, and that doesn't matter. You need to understand that you cannot spam in this game. You cannot spam block. That doesn't work. People do not realize how easy it is to bypass block. And you know what that means? That means that the people who are calling you a block spammer are just bad. And they're mad that you're better than them. Because they can't hit you. Why can't they hit you? Because they're worse than you. Another thing to apply to your blocking is tracking. So tracking as in keeping your camera, keeping your, your screen on your opponent. Following your opponent very well will help you so much. In my experience, people always try to do like a 360 front dash and try to bypass my block. And 90% of the time I manage to block that because I track them all the way around as they try to come around me and I, I just manage to block them mostly all the time. That's where tracking comes in handy. And you can even, like, it, this is a bit harder, but you can even track side dashes. You can predict side dashes, say someone keeps side dashing to the left side. You know they're gonna just side dash to the left again. So just track them and then you can block their side dash and surprise them. Another very important thing is strafing and jumping. Now, I wouldn't say these are important. These are as important as the other ones, but you just need to keep moving. Sitting in one spot is the absolute worst thing you can do, because unless you're just super like ultra good at blocking, they're gonna hit you. So you need to be moving at all times, and you need to be unpredictable, so that you need to make it look like you're not gonna side dash or do a front dash or do whatever, but you can surprise them or something like that. And stuff like jumping. Jumping is very good for masking like side dashes and stuff. Probably the most cheesy sort of thing that I'm gonna say here is you should start backdashing more. Backdashing is very special because in the first half of the animation, you're basically immune to, to M1s when those iframes are active. So what a lot of high level players do is when they obviously know you're gonna counter their side dash or something, they'll just backdash so they don't get countered. I would recommend doing this, but if you actually respect your opponent and don't want to be called a runner and stuff like that, then I just, if you want to be nice, I wouldn't do this. But it works, and it's very effective. One of the most important things in this game is adapting to the way people are fighting. For example, earlier I mentioned, oh, if this guy keeps side dashing to the left, then you just predict him side dashing to the left, and then you can counter him. That's exactly what adapting is. But this applies to pretty much everything the opponent does. If they're doing something that you know you can counter, then counter it. That's called adapting. Adapt to their playstyle and try to counter what they're doing. Find a mistake and try to counter it. I know you would all spam comment about combos missing, because for some reason you all think that combos make you good at the game. So here is all you need to know about combos. Don't do a full combo unless you've made the opponent use their evasive. This is key. This is common knowledge, pretty much. Another thing you can do is you can just use combos that don't require you to make the opponent evasive. So Saitama has some, for example. He has two M1s, consecutive punches, one M1, and normal punch. You can't ragdoll out of that. You can only ragdoll out of the end of it. And even still, it's confirmed 45% damage. And most of the time, pretty much 99% of the time, you're gonna have to force your opponent to use their evasive. Just know that. We're nearing the end, let me just give you a few tips and tricks. This isn't really like a tip per se, it's like you, you need to ignore people calling you things like block spammer and just people calling you spammer in general. It's not possible to spam in this game. If someone tells you it is, they're wrong, it's not. If someone calls you a spammer, they are mad. They're mad you're winning. So just take that as you're winning the mind game here. They're mad and that's gonna make them lose. And this one is pretty important. Don't instantly use your awakening once you get it. You want to save your awakening. Say your opponent uses their awakening. You can run for as long as you can, waste their awakening time, and then once you can't run anymore, that's when you use yours. Now they have to run away from you, and they don't have an awakening to counter like you did. You have a higher chance of winning. And awakenings are also just a really good heal. So if you're like almost dead and you're on your last life in ranked, just use your awakening. Like, come on, why wouldn't you? It's just a free heal. Even if your awakening's trash, just use it. And this is also important, you need to use your ragdoll cancel correctly. Don't ragdoll out of attacks that don't confirm a combo. And don't ragdoll at the end of a combo. Say somebody uses, like, the Garo second move into the first move. 
where they have to rely on you falling into their move, don't ragdoll out of that. There's a very high chance that that combo will not work. And then later they could just get you in an actual combo that is confirmed if, they, if you don't have a ragdoll cancel. And ragdolling at the end of a combo is bad because they finish their combo and they can't do another one on you because their moves are on cooldown. So what's the point of wasting your ragdoll when they can't even do damage to you? I did not explain everything that I know here, but once you understand this stuff, you're gonna be better than 90% of the player base, trust me. And don't try these, then come back to my video saying they didn't work, or that my advice is trash. You have to keep playing the game with these techniques over and over again to see any sort of progress. That's how it happened for me, and that's how it's gonna work for you, unless you're some prodigy that just learns everything in 10 minutes. Now I wish you all luck.